Okay, this is a quick demonstration of what I've got so far on this uh, particle creation from vacuum energy or to static pots um, uh, device. Uh, it's not complete yet, but I just thought I'd show you what I've got done so far. This is the setup. Let me go over it. Here's my power supply. This is ground, and this is uh, high voltage positive. This is high voltage negative, both respect to ground. So this red wire is the uh, is positive, although I changed colors after here. But um, let's see. So those two connections go down to here. So the positive is going to the outer cylinder right here, this perforated aluminum cylinder, and the uh, negative is going to the inner uh, copper rod uh, plate. Uh, then inside of here, there are two other cylinders, both uh, copper mesh, uh, all isolated from each other. And uh, these two wires, this is for the outer one of those two cylinders, this is for the inner one of those two cylinders, and those are the output uh, cylinders. Um, and over there I have the scope, um, the scope here is uh, going to be connected through here, uh, going to two different probes, and uh, in series I have two 200 mega ohm resistors right there since the current is so low. Okay, so let me uh, start this thing up. The first thing to do is to uh, turn on the power supply, and you'll see the effect of that right here. Um, that's all the ripple. Um, that I get with this uh, Krakow voltage, uh, Walton voltage multiplier, and uh, I leave it for, there for about five seconds, and then I pull this apart. So what I've just done now is charged the capacitor. Um, so I'll turn off the power supply and uh, discharge it for safety. There we go, nice and safe but our capacitor is still charged. Um, so the next thing I want to do, um, the inner cylinders that are inside here, I want to charge them as well. I'm going to do that inductively by tapping these two together and showing you what happens on the scope when I do that. There we go, I've stopped the scope output and I caught it right here. So you can see one is positive and one is negative and that's the current that flowed uh, when I touched these two together. It's the current that flowed uh, from one plate to the other plate, actually in this direction, from the outer cylinder, the electrons went to the inner cylinder. So the outer cylinder is left positive and the inner cylinder is left negative uh, charged. Okay, now uh, the next step. Next step is just to demonstrate that um, um, now they're charged and they're going to remain charged. So I'll just release the scope right here by clicking on that run start button. Okay, and I'll touch these together. Oops, when I did that I had actually had it on stop. You can see there's a little bit of a reversal there, but now when I'm holding them touching here, nothing left, and if I keep tapping, still nothing. So uh, that's it, but they're charged inside. Now to prove that, and that's it, that's what we want right now. So that means whenever we connect the load across the two inner cylinders, like I'm doing right here, the load being the scope, um, the inner cylinders will remain charged because the outer plates of the capacitor, this, um, this uh, outer cylinder and the inner rod, are both charged and they hold the charge to the inner cylinder plates. Um, so that's the demonstration there. So what I'm going to do now is discharge the outer plates to further prove this. There we go. So I've now discharged the outer um, aluminum perforated uh, cylinder and the um, inner copper rod. I've neutralized them. There we go. And the question is what happens when I uh, touch this right here? Is this. Right. So what happened is the outer cylinder and the inner rod are no longer charged. They don't have a voltage on them anymore. So now they're not holding the charge to the inner cylinders. The inner cylinders were still charged, but there's nothing in, um, keeping them that way anymore. So that when I shorted it, it actually did short and you see the directions actually reverse now. So what that means is the electrons went from the inner uh, copper cylinder 
to the outer cylinder neutralizing them both. Um, and what that means is that uh, as long as the outer plate, outer so the outer cylinder and the inner rod here are both holding them in place, they keep their charge. When they're no longer um, at a voltage, um, and I short it, then they lose their charge. The good thing is they hold their charge. Uh, that's what's needed for the circuit to work. I don't have anything happening yet with the fluctuations. Uh, it's uh, this work in progress.